What is going on, CyberFam? Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about how data is the new oil, or is it? <laughs> anyway, before we jump into that topic, I just want to give a big thank you to all of you guys. Really appreciate the love. If you guys really like the content, then feel free to aptly apply a little bit of pressure on the like button. If you really, really like all my other stuff, then feel free to just uh, you know hit the subscribe button and welcome to the family. Anyway, let's get into it. So is data the new oil? Now, the thing is, of course, this is a nuanced answer, but you know, not to waste your time. Yes, it's totally the new oil. It's actually the new oil and gold combined. Think of it that way, right? But of course, as everything is, it's a little nuanced, right? Now, it's a cocktail party thing, right? If you go to a party and somebody's like, yeah, data is a new oil, bro. Like he might sound like really cool and stuff, but you know, most of the time, most of the time when engineers hear that, they just like roll their eyes, right? Because where it's true, there's so much to this, so much more to this than people think. Now, put it this way, anything when it comes to data, you have to think of it from end to end, okay? So from the beginning of the data since its inception all the way to the end where it's consumed, okay? Think of it this way. I'm just gonna try to explain this in a way that it will be easier for you guys to understand. This is actually a good way to, in my opinion, this is what I use to invest in companies to see how they're in this life cycle okay there's a saying in the software space where you say garbage in garbage out in the beginning right in the right in the beginning phase of everything right if the data that you're getting is not accurate the entire pipeline is garbage okay let me give you an example you have a data clerk right they're supposed to enter one of three things it's either type a type b or type c and this is just the beginning of the product now beginning of the pipeline when he's entering stuff let's say by accident you know he's pressing b instead of a right? Just for maybe like 30% of the time. The thing is, as soon as this particular data set is created, if you actually have a full data pipeline, there's so many things along the line, all the way to the end that happen to this particular data set. There's automation that happens within the pipelines themselves. So it's not just about data processing and data entry. There's a lot of inferences where there's, they compare a few data sets together. Um, each company will have hundreds if not thousands of tables that store different kinds of data sets that all have relationships with each other actually so there's a, there's a whole space within this entire like pipeline like some of the key points throughout this whole thing is just basically like multiple data source capture so like you want to make sure that you have capturing it from multiple sources you'd have to have like proper structure and schema so that when you actually pull in the data you're storing it in like where you want it to be which is think about it like this like if you're if you're trying to organize stuff if you have a huge data company right think of it like lockers Every locker is different. You want to be, you want to make sure you want to put certain things in the right stuff. Like if you have socks, you want to put it in a certain locker. So you know the next time you need to get it, you can go to that locker, right? So that being said, these guys think about like thousands of lockers. So they have to organize this. The whole organization, like this row is going to be just for pants. This row is going to be for socks. This row is going to be for phones and all this other stuff, right? How that works is basically how schema is. Like you specifically preset a certain type of you know, data set that comes in. So as it comes in, it's always the same for that source. So all of this stuff goes on in the background. It's not just about abundance of data. There's also like extraction processes resolved and like there's other data sets that depend on this data set. Even if the beginning part is just a little bit corrupted, the entire thing is basically crappy, okay? Now, just to give you a little hint, this is exactly where Palantir exceeds a little bit too, okay? So like a lot of companies will do optimizations within this pipeline where if something doesn't look right, they'll have some kind of like automation that says, hey, you know, you might want to check this out because it doesn't actually, you know, fit the model of what you're trying to do. I've worked on this stuff before for one of the places I worked for where we'd get these massive files that come in, right? Like just crazy amount of files from like grocery stores and retail stores and stuff like that. And what we had, what we basically had to do, one of the steps is go through each of these files and say, okay, does this seem a little fishy compared to what they're usually used to? And if it does, it flags a system. And then that system then goes and like sends out emails and all these alerts and notifications. And basically people can either say, yep, you're good, continue. In which case, by the way, it becomes a, like a entry in our database. And we say, okay, next time, maybe don't look for this, right? Or if, if they say, yes, this is a problem, then we'll flag that in another database and say, okay, next time look for more of these. And what is the root cause of this, right? These are all data data pipeline optimizations that a lot of companies offer. Now, not every company offers this. Some companies just gather data. Some companies just, 
you know, do some analysis on the data. Some companies that play well in this space are companies like Datadog, Databricks, Snowflake, Tableau was another one. A lot of these big data companies focus in that middle area where they just work on optimizations and that kind of stuff. So the ones that do the entire pipeline will take the majority of the cake because they know from end to end what to expect and what to do. So just keep that in mind, guys, right? So right in the beginning, you can mess this thing, whole thing up, right? That's why companies like, you know, whenever I hear people like, oh, uh, you know, this company's going to win because they have all the data. This company's going to, you might be right, right? And especially when it comes to like Tesla, they're, they're almost 100% right, especially when it comes to the, the full self-driving, right? But the real truth is the reason why they're going to win is not because of their data lead, it's because of their data quality and lead, right? They have tons of data for sure but the quality of their data is exactly what they want. You guys understand what I'm saying? So it's accurate data. It then it's basically curated to the next step, in which case you actually sit there and you feed it into your, your algorithms because it's exactly what you need to train. That's where that labeling stuff happens for Tesla, right? I'm just giving you guys a gist. So all of this stuff was very crucial. Now, data, when they say data is the new oil, it's not the raw data that's the new oil. Data is very similar to oil in this way, that it's very raw. Okay, so you need a ref basically a refinement process to then basically take that oil and or data and turn it into something that's usable. Vaseline, gas, uh, lubrication, all this other stuff, right? Now, in each step of the way, just like oil, there are going to be these companies that take the cake in these things, right? Some companies will be able to touch on the whole thing. Um, Palantir has a platform in, in the sense of foundry. This thing is a beast and it does almost every step of the way. That's why in some of the videos you see the people actually say, oh, we're using this feature in foundry to do this and we're using this feature in foundry. We're writing scripts on top of the things that foundry offers to do this other thing to help us with our data. That's where that comes from. They're, they have, they're touching on different parts and processes of that entire data pipeline. So keep that in mind, guys. Raw data is basically just garbage, right? It's it's like, what are you gonna do with crude oil? You can do nothing. You can't put it in your car. You can't put it you know, on your face. You can't do nothing, right? It's really just a very raw product. So keep that in mind. Another really big, like, uh, and Palantir isn't the only company that's doing this. Neither is Tesla. Google's a great company that does this very, very well. Like. Google, at the end of the day, know exactly what they want from the data sets. Like if you look at the uh, the marketing side of it, Google ads and that kind of stuff, they know exactly how to target. There's a whole industry called programmatic advertising that come from this exact thing that I'm talking about. It, they know exactly what to offer their client, aka the programmatic advertisers and agencies, to say, okay, how do we target people based on this? Like they can tweak the right knobs and to create those knobs to tweak they know how to infer from the raw data. They've been doing this for years. That's why they're at this phase now. So just keep that in mind, guys, okay? So like when someone says, um, you know, data is the new oil and they don't go into it further, I would really question that because to be honest with you, data is only the new oil if it's gonna be able to be used, if they have a refinery, right? And the whole, this whole refinery thing, I mean, I gotta give credit to username hashtag blue sky on Twitter. Um, I'll put his Twitter handle over here. Um, I mean, we were all thinking it, man. You just said it, so good on you, bro. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I mean, that's, that's been it. Just remember, what you guys will see is the fr like the beginning and the end, okay? You'll see the people that grab a bunch of data, and then you'll see people that analyze and give you the products, like usually consumer products or whatever. You won't see the entire in-between. And that's where most of us engineers and stuff like that work. So I'm telling you, from that perspective, there's tons of opportunity in that middle space. Lots of different companies will come out and they do different kinds of stuff. Some companies will play a bigger role in the whole picture. And that's why I'm investing in Palantir. So let me know what you guys think, man. I mean, if you guys uh, feel you know I'm wrong or I missed something, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below. There's very often times where I've missed some things in my video and I explain it in the comment section. So feel free to ask away. But honestly, that's it for me. Um, that's all I got. I just wanted to get this point out to you guys real quick. I hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday. Have a good one, guys. Peace.